Hi, this is Jeremy with Fundamental Tennis. Do you have a good backhand slice? You probably don't even use your backhand slice enough or you don't know how to use it in terms of the stroke technique. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you the very common flaws in the slice backhand technique that I see all the time among all levels of tennis players. Now you probably hit your slice backhand very high over the net which often puts you immediately on defense for the next shot. Maybe you make a lot of slice errors. Maybe your slice backhand just simply goes too slow. I'm gonna show you how to get a very fast, low, biting, knifing slice that's gonna even put you on offense. I know a lot of you think that the slice backhand is used just for defensive situations, or maybe you think it's a weak ball. Well, I want you to have that feel-good slice because I feel like the slice backhand is like the most feel-good shot in tennis. It's one of the most beautiful shots in tennis. And most people hate playing players who hit a slice backhands because hitting a slice backhand limits what your opponent can do with the ball about as much as any shot that you can hit. Now, let me first explain what a slice backhand is in case you don't already know. The slice backhand is used when you swing high to low and your non-dominant hand comes off the racket just before contact. This makes the ball spin backwards or backspin, which is the opposite of topspin, of course. Now, the reason you wanna have a good backhand slice, because again, I know a lot of you are hitting your slice and the ball is going very high over the net, it's going slow, you're probably making a lot of errors. When you use a backhand slice is when the ball is low and short, you often need to use the slice backhand as a low contact shot is sometimes required if it's low enough to have an open racket face which you will have when you have a slice backhand. If you use your regular backhand drive, that ball will go into the net because the strings are not open. Again, the ball's very low, you need that slice backhand. You also use the slice backhand when you need extra reach, probably you're on defense if you don't use the slice, you don't have as much reach, especially if you have a two-handed backhand. Now the slice is often used for variety. It's a change of pace shot. It's used to disrupt the rhythm of the opponent. And again, it's a shot that most people hate to receive. When you hit a slice backhand, if done correctly, the ball will stay very low over the net and after it bounces, it will stay low. So the opponent has trouble with this shot because the ground is in the way of, of getting under the ball to be offensive. It's hard to hit that ball flat. So it's often a building shot to set up you to be on offense for the next ball. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to hit an effective slice backhand because again, it's not just used on defense. It's not a weak shot. It is used on offense, defense, and neutral situations. So there's a ton of reasons to have a good backhand slice. And again, it's such a fun shot to hit. So I'm gonna show you several common technical flaws I see, which is why you are hitting the ball very high over the net. It's why you don't have a good backhand slice. We're gonna talk about a drill at the end of the video that's gonna help you fix all of these technical flaws and have, help you get a great slice backhand in just a few minutes. Let's quickly go over the grip for the slice backhand as the grip is a large part of uh, laying the foundation for what kind of technique, good or bad technique, that you will have for the slice backhand or any stroke for that matter. So we want the index knuckle in line with bevel two, so the second bevel from the top bevel. This is often referred to as the hammer grip or the chopper grip. So if you hold the racket like you're holding a hammer, then you have the correct grip for the slice backhand. Now, first thing I want to talk about in terms of common technical flaws that will lead you to make a lot of errors or hit low quality slice backhands is the word slice. I often like to call the slice backhand underspin or backspin shot because I feel that in my experience, many players, when they hear the word slice, they think of chopping or swinging very much high to low in which they finish very low to the ground. They even have some players hit the ground with their racket at the end of their swing. The problem with swinging too much high to low 
is it's gonna cause a lot of inconsistency in your shot. There's too many variables in which will mess you up and cause errors, and you will often hit that ball into the net. So instead of thinking slice or chop, I want you to think backspin or underspin. We're trying to make the ball spin backwards. Now, here is a visual I like to use with my players that helps them to not swing too much high to low. So again, in this underspin backhand, I'd like you to envision a giant stick of butter here and think of your racket as a knife. We're going to put our knife into the butter, the top sliver of the butter, and instead of leaving our knife in the bottom of the butter, the stick of butter at the end of the swing, I'd like you to swing through, skim the top sliver of the butter, and then finish with your knife off or out of the butter up high. So a good visual also is to finish with your hitting hand above your waist, okay? Somewhere between your shoulder and your waist is where your hitting hand should finish. A great idea is to hold the finish. So again, giant stick of butter. When you swing at that ball, we're going to cut through the top sliver of the butter and instead of leaving the knife in the butter, we're going to finish with the knife out of the butter. This way you get a fast slice as opposed to when you swing too much down, it makes the ball have too much spin and you don't get the speed with the spin. You won't get a penetrating slice. So visualize hitting through the butter and not finishing with the knife in the butter. Okay? Also again, a good visual is to finish with your hitting hand above your waist. Hold the finish, check the finish. I'm big on holding the finish because then you can really see if you finish properly. Again, this is huge to get the right swing path because the swing path is of course a large, uh, large part of where the ball will go and how good your slice backhand will be. Here is another misconception about the underspin backhand. At contact, it seems that most players believe that the racket face or the strings should be facing almost straight up to the ceiling. As you can see, my strings are too much open. If we compare it to a, a racket face like this, the strings are too much open. Now, what players often do is, if they hit the ball with the strings too much open, they have to compensate for that by swinging really high to low, so chopping straight down to the ground. And this creates a lot of difficulty in getting the backspin shot even in the court, let alone hitting a quality backspin shot. Now, what you wanna do instead is, at contact, the string should be only a few degrees open, as you can see here. So the strings are open, but not a lot. If you make contact like this with the right swing path, you'll have a lot of spin and speed. You'll get that arrow trajectory that you're looking for. If you make contact with the strings too much open, the ball will tend to go very high and sit up for the opponent to attack you. So instead of having the open face, we want the strings only a little bit open. And again, if your strings are wide open, you really have to swing too much high to low. As we saw the uh, previous misconception was people swing too much high to low, and that's largely has to do with the open racket face. So you need to have the strings only a little bit open, and then you have a chance to have the right swing pass so you can get a really good penetrating underspin backhand. It's likely that you are preparing or turning, you're getting ready for that incoming ball with your hitting elbow very low. So if you take a look at my right elbow, it's well below my shoulder, it's too low, it's very close to my chest. When the elbow is too low during the preparation, it's gonna cause you to swing too much high to low. And as we talked about with our first misconception, this is a very common problem and a big issue that's really gonna hurt your quality of that underspin backhand. So the elbow height is gonna largely dictate the swing path. What we wanna do is have the elbow at about shoulder level as you can see here. So I'm pointing my elbow towards the ball or towards the opponent. From here, if the elbow is correctly set at shoulder height, I can now swing forward 
instead of just down, and that will allow you to hit a very fast ball. Another flaw that is probably the most common one I see, in fact, I'm not sure I've had a lesson for the first time in which we worked on the underspin backhand and they didn't have this common flaw. Now this is such a problem because it's going to really hinder you the control of your underspin backhand. It's gonna be very hard to place the ball. What I'm talking about is the position of the dominant wrist. If your wrist is not in an, a good, strong position, then you will not be able to control the racket during the contact phase, therefore you won't have good control of the ball and where you want to put the ball. So the correct position of the wrist, if we look at my hand and wrist right now, I call this a neutral wrist position. This is what many players do when they hit a underspin backhand, and this is what you don't want. Now watch my hand now. This is called radial deviation. Now watch again, I move my hand or wrist to the left. Also, you need to have wrist extension, as you can see here. So this is a neutral position. I have radial deviation and then wrist extension as well. Now from the very beginning of the stroke to the very end of the stroke, you need to maintain this wrist position so that you have strength, so that you have control of the racket therefore you can control the ball. Now a great visual I, I like to use with my players is at the end of the swing, I want them to hold the fist and check the finish and ensure that the racket head is next to the hand. So if I'm hitting the ball this way, as you can see the racket head is next to my hand. What we don't wanna do is finish with the racket head in front of my hand. As you can see I'm flicking the racket here towards the target. This is not gonna give you more spin this is not going to give you control. So at the finish, racket head next to the hand, hold the finish, check the finish. Don't swing fast initially when you do this because then you're going to have a tendency to want to flick the racket head forward. Now a side note is, as you can see that the strings are facing pretty much straight up to the ceiling. This is not a byproduct of the contact or this is not what happened at contact. The strings are gonna be, again, slightly open as I mentioned earlier, and then you will naturally open the strings more so as you decelerate into your follow through. So when you see the pros or myself finish with the strings wide open, that does not mean that that's what it looked like at contact. This drill can really help you fix any of the technical flaws that I mentioned in this video. So I'd like you to be on the ground as I am with your non-dominant knee on the ground and a towel or some sort of cushion under that knee. Now your dominant leg, I'm a righty, so my right leg is gonna be up like this with the knee up. I'm at the baseline, however, I'd like you to do this at the depth of the service line or even closer to the net than that. Now my dominant leg is here as a purpose for me to ensure that I don't swing too much high to low because if I do, then my leg will be in the way and I might hit my leg. So you're just gonna toss the ball up for yourself, let it bounce, and do a slow swing. That's why I have you close to the net. The faster you swing, the harder it is to get rid of any bad habits. So if you have somebody else who can drop the ball for you, that's even more ideal. So I'm gonna do a couple demonstrations here. Okay, so that one felt good. I'll do one more time. You might feel a little uncomfortable in this position. And if you are, you could always go to the dominant knee, now is on the towel, and then your non-dominant leg is spread out with a wide base. This is good for balance, you'll probably be more comfortable, although the previous position may be more beneficial in helping create that new positive muscle memory. So I'll do one more here. Drop, contact, and I hold the finish, check the finish. My dominant hand is above the waist and below my shoulder. The racket head is next to the hand, as we've already mentioned in the video. So I want you to go on the court, try out that drill, work on your underspin backhand technique, and enjoy watching your opponents dig those very low underspin backhands that you have now mastered. If you enjoyed this video, please 
Give me a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I hope to see you in another video very soon.